Greetings, people. It's Paul Greenshire Homestead. I'm going to talk to you real quick about uh, cisterns. Uh, probably won't be real quick. A uh, lot to talk about. Um, the cistern, we have a well. It's what they call a high capacity, low volume well. So the, the, we've got a six inch pipe that goes down into the ground and it, it's hit a large body of water down there. That's your high capacity. But it's just a six inch pipe and uh, the, the water you know comes up into that pipe and there's a pump in the bottom and being that it's a six inch pipe down in, in the, uh, the body of water that's your, your low volume so low volume high capacity um, but because it's a, a low volume well and even though it's high capacity you never know when a well might run dry that's a good reason to have a cistern because if the well runs dry, we can run to town with uh, our, our bulk tank. I've got a tank in the bed of my truck holds 250 gallons of water. So I can run to town, fill that up at the uh, treatment plant, and then uh, dump that in the cistern. Cistern holds 1,200 gallons of water. So the pipe in that well holds about 60 gallons at a time, so, somewhere between 60 and 80 gallons of water. And the water comes out of that well it goes into the house, into the basement, and it, to a pressure tank. We've got a 36-gallon uh, pressure tank in there. So that's how we originally set it up, was the well was going to feed the pressure tank. And what the pressure tank does is the water comes from the well into the pressure tank, and then the pressure tank pressurizes the water through the pipes in the house. I did a video on wells, deep wells, and also on pressure tanks. So if, you, if you'd like more information about those, you can watch those videos. Um, but we, you know, the, we don't have water lines here, so we got we started getting concerned. And wells can be a little finicky in this area, so we thought, you know, we better put in a cistern just as a, a safety valve. So the water comes from the well, goes into that pressure tank in the basement, that 36-gallon tank, uh, and then from that 36-gallon pressure tank, it comes into the cistern when the cistern calls for it. And then a after, uh, and then the water from the cistern goes back into the basement into a second pressure tank. And then that pressure tank then pushes it through the house. So what the well's doing is filling the cistern and what the cistern's doing is giving our house water. Now, if there's a problem in the cistern, like the pump down in the bottom goes out or the pressure tank from the cistern goes out, you know, there's some kind of a problem. I can shut the valves off for the cistern, open the valves for the uh, well, and then the house is being fed off the well. So, you know, it's kind of a, a good thing there too. If one of these systems were to fail, we can use the other one. So that's another thing about having a cistern and a well that I like. So, and another good thing is, you know, wells will sometimes pull up silt and other types of debris. That's just the way they are. You know, it's an underground body of water. And because the water comes from the, the well into the pressure tank, the pressure tank into the cistern, while it's in the cistern, that gives that, that sediment or debris time to settle at the bottom of the cistern rather than getting pushed through our house. So that, that's another thing. You, you do need to clean your cisterns, and I do it about every four years. So I've done it once because we've been here four years. Real easy to do, just takes time, and I'll discuss that. But, so, th with this holding 1,200 gallons, if, if the, the well were to run dry, we use 40 to 50 gallons of water a day. So 1,200 gallons is going to last us almost a month. And because I got that tank in the bed of my truck, I run to town once a week and get 250 gallons and dump it in here. That's all I got to do. Make one trip a week and, and, and we're going to have plenty of water in here. Now, we did have a problem. Uh, I open this thing up at least once a week because I pour a cup of bleach in here once a week just to kill any bacteria that might build up. Came out here one day, opened the lid. You know, it's not hard to do. It, it weighs about 150, 200 uh, pounds. It's, it's not light, but that's good because it keeps debris, you know, and animals and stuff from getting down in there. 
I opened it up to pour my bleach in there, and I saw the water line was down about four feet. And I was like, uh-oh, there's a problem. Well, what it was was pressure tank malfunctioned. That come, the 36-gallon tank that comes from the well into here. So when the water level in here drops below the float valve, you know, this is the float valve. Water level drops about four inches. The float valve kicks on. Water fills back up. And it just does that. So there's always 1,200 gallons in here. Well, it was down about four feet, so I knew that either the float valve was malfunctioning, but it was the pressure tank. So, you know, I thought, okay, well, we still got water in here, so there wasn't an emergency. I mean, you know, water was still coming out of this. There's a pump in here, just like there is in the well. So the this pump was still feeding the pressure tank, so we still had water in the house. So it wasn't an emergency. So I ran it down and bought another pressure tank and installed it and then uh, hooked the valve back up and bam, you know, water was coming back out again. So it wasn't a big deal. But that's the nice thing about having both is you, you've always got that backup because if the problem were the pump down here, I can just shut this off and we can run off the well. So that's a nice thing to do. You know, a nice reason to have a, the cistern. So there's three ways really of filling a cistern. You can, you can go to town, like I said, with you know, your bulk tank, fill your bulk tank up, dump it in the cistern. You can have it hooked up to a well like we do, or you can hook it up to the rain gutters on your house or all the above. Uh, we originally were gonna do all the above, but the well's keeping up just fine. My buddy, in, uh, my buddy Jeff, when he was in high school, that was, that was something he did do. His family lives, the, the farm they have, they, they don't have any water lines either, and they didn't have a well, they just had a cistern. So he would take the flatbed truck to school once a week with the, I think he had a 300 gallon tank and fill that up on his way home from school and then dump it in the cistern. And it was uh, he and his sister and his parents and the four of them lived off that cistern. I think that's what his parents are still doing, I don't know, but it, it works. And uh, to clean it, um, what I do is I shut the well off so the well doesn't fill the cistern anymore. I let the cistern get down to where there's probably about 200 gallons in it, maybe 150. And then uh, I, get, I have a gas-powered pump. I put that up here and I drop the hose down in here. And I suck all the water out and just let it go out into the pasture. The reason I do, I don't want to pump 1,200 gallons of water out of here. I hate wasting water, so I wait till it gets down near the bottom. That's the reason I do that. And then I shut this off, and we run the house off the well. So there's no interruption in water flow through the house while I'm cleaning this, because it takes all day. It's not hard. It just takes a while. Drop the ladder down in there, climb down in there with a, a, a five-gallon bucket full of bleach water and a brush. And I just sit there and I scrub the walls, you know, all the way around, all the way down. It goes down 15 feet. And then at the bot, you know, and then I, I run to town with that tank. I put a hose on the tank and I, I clean the, the wall off real good. Just stand up here and I hose it all down real good. And all, all the, the bleach water and the stuff all run to the very bottom. And then I run to town. Get, get 200, get, you know, fill that tank up. And then uh, um, I uh, put about 100 gallons in here, suck that out. And I get back in there and I hose it all off again, get another 100 gallons in the bottom, and I suck that all out. So it's, it's nice and clean down there. The walls are clean, the bottom's clean, everything's clean. Then I run to town, get 1,200 gallons, just make a few trips back and forth to town put 1,200 gallons back in here because I don't want to fill 1,200 gallons back up from the well two gallons a, at two gallons a minute. That That's going to be taxing on my pump, my pressure tanks, and everything else. So I get the bulk water from town and I fill it back up. But uh, So that's how you clean it. I'll do a video on that next time I clean it. But this does have a lip. You know, it's got this groove that goes all the way around the top and then the lid's got a a lip on it that slips down into that groove. You know, you might hear the old timers talking about 
they don't like cisterns because when they were kids and they cleaned them out, you know, they'd find lizards and frogs and rabbits and all kinds of dead animals in the bottom, you know, which could happen. But this lid, you know, it's covered. Cisterns didn't always used to be covered, and sometimes they just throw plywood over it. But this, like I said, this is heavy, and it's got that lip that sluts, you know, goes down the groove. So we don't even get insects in here. Nothing gets in here. It's, it's nice and clean, not a problem. I'm going to grab the camera here real quick and show you what it looks like inside. So here we have the, bot in the inside of the um, cistern. That's the flow valve there. And then the, the red and yellow wires you see there, that goes down to the pump. But it's got this ladder that goes down in there. And uh, that's, uh, so that's it. I mean, it's, you know, it's 1,200 gallons of water. And there's not, not a whole lot to see, but uh, that's, what, that's what the inside of the cistern looks like. So uh, it ran about $4,500, and that was for everything. They uh, came out, dug the hole, set the tank, trenched the water lines and the power lines, they did everything. And uh, the total cost when they left was it was about forty five hundred dollars. Um, I think he gave me a pretty good price on it because it's the same guy that put our well in. But uh, that's that's kind of what you can figure on. Um, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of forty five hundred dollars, five five thousand dollars, somewhere in there. But it's it's a good means of having a safe, reliable water source on your property. You know, if you don't have rural water. So I highly recommend it. We haven't had any problems, you know, other than that pressure tank going out, and that didn't have anything to do with the cistern. So it's Paula Greenshire Homestead. Um, I wish you luck with your water needs. Water is the most important thing you're going to have on your homestead, so take good care of it. Make plans for it. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.